So yesterday, we were watching a politics live segment where Jeff Norcott, a kind of right-wing comedian, was having a discussion with Ava Santina of Politics Show and Francis O'Grady of XTUC fame and current Labour peer. Uh, he was having a discussion about something about his books where he was releasing a book where he was discussing men's issues in the UK and one of the topics that came up in the discussion was male suicidality and whether or not we should have a minister for men to look at and deal with potential issues with, for men. I think that it feeds into the culture a little bit, this Minister for Men argument. Like, In my mind, I think there should be a Minister for Mental Health, which would be all-encompassing. I mean, you've got something like 7 million children waiting for prescriptions for mental health at the moment. It's a crisis that's endemic throughout the country, not specific to men. And I think, you know, a lot of ministers kind of bandy this about to sort of... I'm sorry, but make an enemy out of women, I think. Not you, and I don't think your book well, I, is. I, 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 but no, I, I think Sunak... I don't accept that. I don't think... Now, my interpretation of the discussion that was had was that I think that there is a good case for there being a minister for men. Male su suicidality is a problem. Men's mental health is a problem. And this does need a nationwide conversation. And in that discussion, I think that Ava Santina and Francis O'Grady tried to derail the discussion somewhat about women's issues rather than having a frank and open discussion about the very large and real issue of males suicidality right and i think that was a reasonable criticism to have when you have this discussion when such an important thing is coming up that affects loads of people that can put people off the feminist movement in general right if you are a man who thinks that feminism is against you and you hear two women who are probably are feminists railing against the idea of just even the discussion around male suicidality that might put you off so i think it's optically pretty poisonous to get position but i don't think that they hate men or that they are in some way destroying the discourse or anything like that i just think they need to think about the optics of the way that they're presenting things, and those are the kind of criticisms that I have. Now, uh, Lawrence Fox and Dan Wooten, who's definitely his real name and not indeed Martin Branning, they did not have the same criticisms that I had. They had very different criticisms of Ava Santina and Francis O'Grady, having different opinions on male suicidality and whether or not we should have a minister for men and men's issues, etc, etc. And so they went on GB News, it was on Dan Wooten's show, with Lawrence Fox coming on to have a discussion around Ava Santina saying these things on Politics Live. And they had, yeah, as I said, a pretty different view. Let's watch. We're past the watershed, so I can say this. Um, show me a single self-respecting man that would like to climb into bed with that woman ever, ever, who wasn't an incel, who wasn't a cucked little incel. That little woman has been... F I thought the cucks and the incels were the ones who were more likely to be committing suicide, but you say that they would be the only ones who would be potentially having sex with Ava Santina, who is ignoring their problems? Not only is this, like, brass and misogynistic, right, extremely so, it doesn't even make any sense. Like, even from like a logical perspective, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> fed, spoon-fed oppression day after day after day after day starting with the lie of the gender wage gap. And she sat there and I'm going like, if I met you in a bar and that was like sentence three When did they discuss the wage gap? They didn't discuss the wage gap at all. They discussed toxic masculinity I believe and they discussed issues with kind of sexual violence but they didn't discuss the wage gap on that show. I'm not sure what he's talking about. Chances of me just walking away are just huge. We need powerful strong, amazing women who make great points for themselves. We don't need these sort of feminist 4.0. They're pathetic. And Aren't feminists supposed to be the strong women that you people dislike? I thought you wanted to return to traditional gender roles where women were soft and demure and not indeed. I thought the strong ones were the feminists you dislike. It's a really incoherent point of view, even if it's on top of the fact that it is pretty revolting, the kind of things that he's saying, that he can't just engage with the positions that she's taking. He immediately just resorts to saying, well, I wouldn't bang you and nobody else would bang you either. Mm. Isn't Dan Wooten the guy who took three or four takes of the deeply emotional contemplative video of him laying his tribute outside Buckingham Palace on Lizzie's passing? The very same Dan Wooten. The very same. It is childish, is it? But what else would you expect from GB News, right? It's not even a news programme. They've officially argued they're not a news show. They are in just a current affairs entertainment programme. To be fair, this is pretty entertaining. And embarrassing. Who'd want to shag that? Oh, Lawrence. Well, look, she... <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. I'm, trying, I, I'm just... I'm just... I'm just going to provide a, a, a touch of balance from her because she did actually respond to this. Of the, all the people that you could have this conversation with as well, <laughs> having this conversation with <laughs> with somebody who didn't even find women attractive. Like when you're at the point at which Dan Wooten is like, <laughs> maybe a bit far, I think you might have crossed a line or a boundary here. This earlier today saying that she regretted her comments, but she didn't apologize. Uh, yes, so, <laughs> so, so there you go. <laughs> 
And she's a very beautiful woman, Lawrence. Very beautiful. There you go. Although I'm probably not. I'm probably desperate last minute save there from Dan Wooten, uh, trying to trying to save some face, given the shitstorm he must know is coming his way after it. Yeah, they literally quick cut him off, cut off, get rid of him, get him off the screen. Um, and she tweeted this out. She's had lots of pretty prominent people in her replies, including Emily Thornbury, Stella Creasy's been in there as well. So she's had an outpouring of support for this. Now, in the wake of this, GB News have done the unthinkable. GB News have gone woke. They've cancelled Lawrence Fox. He's been cancelled. I can't believe that he would get cancelled so hard. What about free speech, GB News? I thought it was a violation of free speech if people parted ways with you based on things you've said or done that might infect their brand. But uh, no, he's been cancelled now. Never going back. GB News have been caught by the cancelled culture mob woke virus. In a statement posted to Twitter, GB News said it apologised for the totally unacceptable comments that the broadcast had launched an investigation. They're investigating him for just saying some words. How dare they violate his free speech like that? <laughs> Consequences for the actions and the things that I've said. That is a violation of free speech. So yeah, uh, he's gone now. And it turns out he's not the only one who's been a victim of cancel culture. Dan Wooten has been suspended now as well. Byline Times can write all the articles they want, as sourced as well as they can, with every single legal backing, and he will plough on regardless in the face of the cancel culture mob. But he just sits there and then fails slightly to push back on the things that Lawrence Fox is saying in that clip. And he gets victimised by the cancel culture mob as well. They're coming for you, even you you GB news presenters. The council culture mob are coming for you as well. It's incredible what lines they have at the GB news press office, right? All of like the Martin Branning accusations and allegations, they're fine. No suspension, no investigation into the allegations whatsoever. You sit there while somebody else makes bad comments, then you suspend them. Incredible. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see it. Very, very strange position for us to be in, but that is the line that is beyond the pale as far as the GB news brand team are concerned. And in the wake of this, in the wake of this, Dan Wooten has apologised on Twitter about this. I want to reiterate my regret over last night's exchange with Lawrence on GB News. Having looked at the footage, I can now see how inappropriate my reaction to his totally unacceptable remarks appears to be. I want to be clear that I was in no way amused by the comments, apart from laughing when he said the comments. I react as I, as I did out of shock and surprise in an off-guard moment while working out how to respond as he continued to speak by searching for tweets Ava Santina had sent me earlier in the day while having them read out in my ear at the same time. However, I should have been intervened immediately to challenge offensive and misogynistic remarks. I apologise unreservedly for what was a very unfortunate lapse in judgement on my part under the intense pr pressure of a bizarre exchange. I know I should have done better. I'm devastated that I let down the team and our supportive GB News family. We seek to tackle the issue, not the person, which I intend to stress again on air tonight. And the best part is, he's been absolutely wrecked in the community notes. Lawrence Fox has shared a private message conversation between himself and Dan Wooten, where they laugh and joke about his contribution. Mr Wooten shares several crying with laughter in emojis, the universal symbol for I'm not mad, which strongly indicate that he was indeed amused by Mr Fox's contribution. And here indeed is the message. And Lawrence Fox retweeted him. Lawrence Fox retweeted the apology, condemning Dan Wooten for apologising by leaking the DMs, by saying making you giggle is my weekly joy. You can imagine them freaking out in the gallery so much fun XX. Literally Lawrence Fox immediately just throwing him under the bus. It's, it's incredible. This whole thing is absolutely incredible. I love it so much. Again, I just think it's weird, right? I think it's very strange that Lawrence Fox can go around tweeting swastikas made out of pride flags and doing and saying the things that he said about people like the transgender community and that not to be over the line. But one comment about Ava Santina and then suddenly he's taken off air. And with Dan Wooten we have all the Martin Branning allegations and they helped signal boost him saying that it was some kind of woke karate blob conspiracy to undermine him. And But now he laughs alongside Lawrence Fox making these comments and then this is what gets them both taken off air. I mean, you know, ends justify the means, I guess. Now, uh, Ava Santina Santina was on Jeremy Vine this afternoon discussing what happened and I'm interested to see her response to what's been said uh, over the last couple of days so let's have a look and see what she was saying. Look we've got to start with a difficult one uh, because Ava's been at the centre of something quite horrible um, which I, I when I came into the office this morning I didn't know anything about. I mean it's just appalling and uh, I don't know whether you saw it go out live. Or no. <laughs> no I, I didn't. I, 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 I saw it on your Twitter feed so you you shared it can you tell me how you feel about that? <laughs> Um, I don't, I think the clip speaks for itself. I don't have anything to say about it at all. I'm actually, I, I'm actually a journalist um, rather than a, a commentator and I'd much rather be judged or asked about my work than be, have people talking about my body. I just think, I, I don't, 
sorry, I'm a bit speechless. I, I just don't really know what to say well, to you. Well, I think we're you're, probably you're, speechless as well. You're incredibly hurt by this, and I, and I can understand why. I, d I don't quite know what he was doing there. I don't think any man or woman would understand what he was doing there. You know, I'm a great believer that when you're doing this sort of debate on television, you can take someone's argument apart. You might hate their argument. You can take their argument apart. What you don't do is get personal. And what you don't do is talk about their, and if I'll use the word shagability on television, it's just outrageous. And, and you know, I, I... I can't believe this situation has led to me agreeing with this woman whose name I have dutifully forgotten. I think, I think he has done himself more harm than he could ever do you. I and mean, you have to know that. You have to understand. Has he done himself any harm? I mean, he's lost his money, right? He's lost potential revenue from places like GB News, where he has his own show, which is paying a lot of his legal bills at the moment. Um, the kind of people who Lawrence Fox already appeals to are the kind of people who wouldn't be put off by the kind of things that were said in that segment anyway. So, I mean, he's got what he wanted. He's become dominating of the news cycle, which is what these kind of shock journalists are there for. Journalists in inverted commas, right? These shock commentators. They're there to gain the public's attention, to gain notoriety. And there's no such thing as bad publicity, which I'm feeding into. So thank you very much, Lawrence. I will be receiving your check in the mail. I hope so, at the very least. Which, you know, these people who court controversy for views, they know what they're doing. They know that they're fine to be able to do that. And there's nobody out there who previously held a strong view of Lawrence Fox, but given all what he's done up to this point, which would somehow be clouded by the statements that he's made there. This is not going to harm you. This will harm him. Um, and and, and I don't quite know why that was allowed to go on. I mean, you're hurt by it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm, I'm really hurt by it. I am. I'm, yeah, I'm shocked by it, actually. I'm shocked that it went out. And I'm shocked that... Actually, do you know, this is the sort of talk that you, you worry that men have about you when you're not in the room. There's always sort of a worry in the back of your mind, which is, are people actually interested in what I'm saying or what I'm doing, or are they just looking at me for physically? And I think that that clip proves that there are some men who but are. But you, you know that there are men like that. We know that. But what we normally don't see is that being broadcast live on television. That's what. That's why it is... Yeah, yeah, I expect it from Lawrence Fox. Everyone expects it from him. Like, has he ever shown any time in the last few years where he's been politically relevant? Has he ever shown that he ever had and held any other opinions than that? As I was pointing out earlier, he's done way worse than this up to this point. And I think, quite frankly, it's wild that this was, this was the Rubicon being crossed here as far as GB News were concerned. Shocking. I, I'm not shocked that men talk like that about women behind closed mm. doors, but I am shocked that someone would say that on television there was the there was a there was a hatred in his voice there i mean if mm. he'd taken you on about your argument about men and mental health um fully, i agree with you on that i mean you and i don't go on a lot politically but i certainly agree. i mean it will harm gb news right the, the kind of culture warriors who watch that show the they would assume they would take the view that i made jokingly earlier that wooten and fox have now been cancelled i mean it is kind of it is true it is peak divorced energy it is peak divorced energy from the second most divorced man in britain behind the obvious of course What's interesting is what I think the differentiation as well is that whilst they may say, oh, well, there are loads of men who will say these things behind about women behind closed doors, they might say it in the abstract, right? And I think it's fine in general to have discussions about who you would, who you would or wouldn't have sex with in the abstract behind closed doors if you're having a discussion about whether or not someone is sexually attractive to you. But this wasn't in the abstract. This was specifically in response and regarding comments that she'd previously made on a political issue. And instead of actually engaging with her arguments, he's gone down the road of reducing her to whether or not he would have sex with her. And that, of course, is why this is as misogynistic as it is, rather than just... I mean, I'm sure everybody in chat has previously had conversations with their friends, people that they know, about who they find attractive and who they would or wouldn't have sex with. Everyone's done that, right? But no one's... Very few people have had, oh, okay, that's an interesting point. Not very fuckable, are, though, are you? Right? No one, no one, no one's ever gone up to Robert Mugabe right, when he was in charge of Zimbabwe and said, that's an interesting perspective that you have, Prime Minister. Have you considered that your wife is ugly, though? Right? There's, 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 those are two separate things. Reminds me of Jess Phillips and Sargon of Akkad. It does. It's very, very similar to Jess Phillips and Sargon of Akkad. Although what Sargon of Akkad said was way, way worse. And UKIP still ran with him. <laughs> it shows you that GB News has even higher standards than UKIP. UKIP, UKIP standards were so low during the Sargon years, they were even lower than what GB News is now.